There we go. <clears throat> oh, I've got to tell you, did you see my post? We're just going to go with this. So if it goes on YouTube, it goes on YouTube. So forget about where we're putting this in a minute. Did you see the post about my picture? <laughs> my team, because it's just taking up space. So I thought I'd get, get that out of the way. So the one you're giving away. It's the one I'm giving away. Oh, it's nice. huge. Oh, my. Just... oh, it is quite big, and I'm going to sign it. It's it's got um special UV glaze on it, so it won't ever fade. It'll take a couple of million years to fade it, so it's quite oh. huge. So. Yeah. I've given them all, because it, it took me a lot of time and it cost me money to get that printed into the special ink and stuff and postage and stuff. So I thought, get them to sub, sub to me and, sub, you know, the, and I'm going to get you guys to to pick a winner out of hat. I'll put all the names in. Oh, that's a great and idea. And I'll do it on the 4th of July, so, and I'll call it out on my Ooh. Patreon. So if you're not subscribed to me, my Patreon link will be below, and Paula's Patreon link will be below, and yeah. our Kismet cards, and our YouTube, and Instagrams, and everything else is all going to be there. But now we're just going to chat. So yeah. sorry that's for awesome. I look like shit. <laughs> I've been up all yeah. night. So I liked how that girl was just talking about what we experience all the time, that if you're a nighttime light worker, you need more sleep. And I have needed a ton of sleep ever since I was a baby and and how we're all on shifts. And I just I just felt the power of it, like from praying medic and from what she said, it just like we are a collective and we all need to be on right now and sharing our messages. And it's, you know it's just no more hiding it's like if you've got a gift if you've got the download get over it and share it because you'll be blown away by how many people needed to hear that and then it's a ripple effect and they tell two friends and so on exactly i've been getting so many downloads as you know and it's just like there wasn't an option there for there was a nighttime light work on a date there wasn't an all-time light work where you just on if you were awake or asleep or daylight or night time, you're just working. <laughs> Wherever yeah. you go, you're working. So yeah. that's what I've been. Yeah, and sometimes if you feel like you're just kind of not there, it's because not all of you is there and just go with it. It's like I think half the trick to getting through this life and being effective is just how to keep your 3D from thinking that there's a problem. You know, just rest, take care of yourself, don't judge yourself, just bring compassion and Phil Good's video. Oh my gosh. Explaining about how we, you know, and I had that experience last night, which was crazy. So I laid down and I went into a really, really deep meditation. I was so awake and I was like, wow, I'm never going to get to sleep. And so I, um, so we've been listening to this book on tape where they talk about the native American Chinookpa, you know, the sacred pipe. And it popped into my head and I said, maybe I won't take the pipe because that's not my tradition, but I'm going to take something very sacred and lay it on my chest. And the moment I did, I sank down into myself so deeply that it became utterly quiet. And I was the only one there and it was just absolute peace. And I just stayed there and it was so <clears throat> quiet and I just kept observing. And then I noticed I was like, I think there are several aspects of myself from parallel timelines that are dealing with stuff and they're calling on me for help. And so I went to one of them and she was just chatty, 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 chatty. And I said, just breathe, just breathe. And then I worked with another one. And then like, by the time I was done working with them, everybody was peaceful. And then when I woke up this morning, that's the only memory I had. I know I was really busy, but the only recollection I had is that I was just helping all of myself to breathe and calm. It's just, I just woke up with the same exact thought that I went to sleep with. It was incredible. Well, he managed to get some sleep. The minute when I when I was watching his video, I was just getting download. I didn't I don't know how I had room to get his download. But I was getting this visual download of what what he was saying. I was getting the visuals for it. So I, I'm drawing it as much as I could. So I did. I just did one part of it, and I thought I'll send that to Phil. So I sent it to Phil, 
and he said he was going oh my god that's amazing and as I was we were chatting it was just like oh, it's not finished yet that's just a small part of it so I made a bigger picture and then sent that to him and then it's like oh and this and then it's then it's stacked and my team then I did a post on my Patreon but basically it says take that that's an individual soul's journey times that by infinity and you don't even get the smallest idea of who you are and it's like what <laughs> but I'm so I'm so grateful that he did share that for me so many people will come onto my art and you know I don't you know I don't like doing these for for the public <laughs> but I don't I don't mind now and again I'm pushed to do it but yeah, so many people will come onto that and get the light codes and get a download and get what they need and they'll find you, Paula, you know, and hopefully when Shelby's feeling a bit less overwhelmed, she'll come on as well <laughs> and do mm. her stuff. So it's just like sharing. I like sharing and sharing our down because it's like the only way we can get rid of our these downloads is I didn't have you guys to chat to every day and give you it's my download it stays stuck in my head and then I'd have to try and fit more in and more in. It's like a hard drive. It's just like as soon as I can t get rid of it, either draw it or speak it, it's gone and then the next one comes in. And the next one, but at the minute, yeah. it just goes boom, boom, boom. So. Yeah, that's how I felt this morning on my way to work. I was like, okay, I'm driving. I'm dressed for painting. I don't care. I have to give these downloads now because if I don't give them, they disappear. It's like maybe they run off to someone else to be shared with the public. But um, yeah, and I just forget them. But but one of the things that really stood out was that um, the, the day that Q began posting is the Seven of Hearts. And so I analyzed that whole hand and everything. And the overarching theme of the Seven of Hearts, of course, is forgiveness and healing and unconditional love. And, you know, letting go of the betrayals of the past, et cetera, a, a lot, get, getting in touch with whatever is keeping you from pure love, whatever attachments you might have, letting those go. And then the moon card to the hand of the seven of hearts is the ace of spades, which is the card of secrets. And it's like, you know, that's what you would think Q's main card would be. But it's like, no, it's forgiveness. And then the karma card to the ace of spades is the seven of hearts, which brings in the whole past lives thing this goes way back we're going through a process of forgiving not just what we are becoming aware of but you know way way back we've we've been in this we've been in this situation for a long long time and and the, since it's the moon card the ace of spades is transformation and rebirth talk about shedding your skin and it's about the secrets of the heart coming out and so the you know the all those verses in the bible about how like God's talking to Samuel about King David and King David is just this ruddy young man and, and God says this is my chosen one and he says but look at him he's just a kid and he said God does not look at the outward appearance but at the heart and so I was thinking of Revelation and Apocalypse that this really is the revealing of our hearts and it's about bringing all that into the light which includes us remembering who we are and these these downloads of revelation about who we really are, what is our true nature, that, you know, that consider the possibility that you are what you would think of as an angel or an ascended master. You know, we have all those labels and then we put them above us and we go through this ranking thing in our minds, but use that as a ladder, climb yourself up a few rungs and consider the possibility that You've come down into this density to transform it. You're on the same exact mission that Jesus was. Yeah. All of them, all of that spiritual family. Yeah. There's every religion had a member jump down and <laughs> take form. So, yeah. but there's just more of us here now, so many more. And it's just like, I, I just wish that more of people will have the courage to come forward. I mean, it takes a lot for me to come forward, as you know, but I just want more people to share, even if it's, you know, you just share somebody's post and put an opinion of what, because it's, it's like we tend to put the new YouTubers and spiritual community people who have got the courage to have the voice, we was the putting them up there on a pedestal where it's like, it's not, it's not, we're all supposed to be, you know, sat on the same level, just sharing our information. 
as we are, we're all normal people. Well, we call us normal <laughs> compared to the, other, the rest of the population. But yeah, I think it's all about just sharing what's what's our truth. And if it, if it's not somebody else's truth, it's you know they've not got there yet. Or they'll you know they'll find their own path to it. It doesn't matter about how you get there as long as you you get to where you want to be, which is in your heart. And that's yeah. the way I see things, you know, just speak yeah, from the heart. Something else I caught, I was listening to um, In the Matrix this morning, and they were interviewing this guy from Brazil who's, who began, he said, how did you begin following mm. Q? And um, I just caught a little bit of it, but when he was talking about the very beginning of it, I think he was saying he had some sort of a, a vision or a dream or an experience, and he saw a round table. He was talking about a round table. Just turn this the other way. And that's exactly the nature of this whole thing is that we're all on the same team. It's it's not, you know, we're getting rid of the hierarchy. That's old, old paradigm. So, yeah, coming out of slavery and oppression can be very challenging. But it begins by the journey into the heart. It does. Jana, you're quiet. You've usually got a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, you can talk to us about, you know, your husband, about his little journey at the minute. And maybe you, I've not got a partner at the minute, but, you know, how they're dealing with the awakening and what they're going through and the little pieces they're going through. Because it's hard living with a partner who's not awake or as aware as you and what they're going through. So you have to unmute, Jana. And their dream time experiences they're having lately, because everyone's being activated. So oh, yes. Away. Well, mine's semi-awake, but he also, he's the kind, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it, because he's not ready to hear it. But living with someone who's higher energy, he has no choice but to see and hear how we operate. And I think living with someone who's not awake will eventually wake them up. And now he's starting to have dreams because um, he says he never dreams. And I said, probably because you're on ship all the time. And I think when I let him know that he's in dreams when I'm doing rescue, um, that kind of got him a little interested. Like, what are you talking about? I'm in your dreams. And it made a huge difference when I started telling him, you're always behind me in my dreams. And you're out there. You're you're observing it you're the observer and i'm the tunnel vision woman i'm i mean if i've got something to do i go straight in it and he's there and so that kind of intrigued him because that's actually how we are now he's the one that observes everything and sees. so that kind of pulled him in and then um he had a dream not too long ago where he saw a picture of three men sketch a sketch of three different men and he said the weird thing is they all look like me but they're not me and I feel like they could be me from past lifetimes. And so he's starting to question little things here and there and put in his tidbits. And then the other night, he came to me and said, I had a dream with Donald Trump. And I'm pulled up. And, of course, he's a firefighter. So he said, I'm assuming in the dream I was there observing the disaster of some sort. He said, I don't know if it was a tornado or something had happened so or disaster going on. He doesn't remember that portion, but he said then uh, President Trump drove up next to him and they're sitting there with their windows down in their truck. And my husband says, so what are you up to? And he looked at my husband and said, just observing, just observing. And he said his truck, Donald Trump's truck was bashed in. One side of the truck was completely collapsed, like it had been just bombarded, obviously, just like what he's going through with no matter what he does, he's being bombarded by all the negative forces. But yet the man and my husband said, I can't even believe the truck was driving. But there he was. And he said, so they both sat there quietly and just observed what was going on. So little by little, living with someone who's of higher vibration, they will wake up slowly in their own time. And then we did also have a discussion recently. Somebody was asking why the people that are not awake yet are not being affected by these energies like we are. And Annette, you explain it really beautifully about the bubbles. And I think everybody would benefit from hearing that. Well, I, I don't like repeating myself, but I, I do. 
I, I won't repeat myself. I've already done a two-hour video on Galactic Connection. Okay. Um, if everyone wants to go and just Google or go onto YouTube, my YouTube Liara three three three, or just Google Galactic Connection and Liara and listen to that because it is. I have to listen to it myself, you know, a few times because I just basically just downloaded that live on the interview. So okay. it's all on there. And it's probably more relevant now. It's about three years ago. It's more relevant now. Obviously, not many people understood it, but now they're probably all going back to it. I know that you you lot have listened to it a few times, and I've listened to it a few times because I get more from it every time I listen to it. Well, basically, we're in bubbles. The three D people are, and did we just was that discussed on that video about the three D? The people that are not awakened yet, they're in bubbles right now, and they're not being affected by the energy. Well, they're in the protective auric field around them go. where everybody else who's waking up and punched themselves. It's an inside job. You've got to break out of you. You've got to do your own inner work. You've got to connect your chakras, pull your chakras one by one from the lowest to the highest into your heart and expand them. Okay. And then it's a case of expanding your energy enough to absorb the lowest band and then the next bands until you've not got a all these energy bubbles around you you've got the same one as the planet but they're all still because their chakras all closed down and inside the bodies they've got the raw field they've got a protective bubble so they're not getting as affected but you know they pull a phone onto into their own field and they'll look at a youtube video and it's like that will activate something in them and a bit more and it's an inside job and it'll wake them up but so you've got to wake up yourself and work on your inner self and then do the work and expand your field and then pop your field <laughs> and well, go into the because the, the planet's in 5d she's in her own 5d field and right. most light workers now are dissolving the fourth dimensional barrier that is and that's why it's so easy for us to get downloads so easy and for yeah. us to get our connection and everything so that's what happened in march i think was it march the 333 but yeah, it's just been more of us passing our codes to each other and putting our passing our codes through the field. It's pushing on the three D. It's it's like a, they're in a pressure cooker. It's pushing on them. The, it's like I said to I said to Shana, it's like uh, or Paula, it's like putting um, a goldfish inside a boat inside a bag with water and tying it tight and then putting that in back in its fish bowl and then putting the fish bowl inside a tank in that tank in the ocean with a lid on it and obviously we've all broken out of our bag and then we've had to break out the fish tank and then we're in the sea and we're like oh right this is where we are <laughs> you know it's like they're still very protected acclimatizing in that bag but they it's like a butterfly as well uh, a caterpillar will put its cocoon around him when you know, the earth has put a natural cocoon around everybody. Exactly. And you can't help um, a butterfly break out its cocoon because that's how it strengthens its wings, is yep. to break out. It's like a chick has got to break its way out its egg. If you help it, it'll, be, it'll always be weak. It's got, that's the survival. So they've got to break out of their own, their yeah. own reality matrixes. It's hacking the matrix and you've got to hack your own first. Yeah. And so with a person being 5D, somebody whose vibration's higher and they're living with someone who's in a bubble, 3D bubble, won't that eventually, that 3D person will continue to pick up codes and vibrations and things from yeah, us? Yeah, because we're transmitting all the time, but they've got to be in a state of receiving. It's like you've got television for all these channels where you can't pick up one channel while you're constantly tuned into another channel. You've got to wait until you've decided to, to flick the channel. And but now and again, you come and sit next to them and flick through the channels and show them there's more channels. And then they'll <laughs> go back and put their own channel back on. And go, oh, there's a few more channels there. Let's have a look when you're not there. And that's yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> they find it. We can't do it for them. No. It's going against their free will as a human sovereign being, even though they don't know it. Yeah, I'd like to speak to the frustration <laughs> aspect. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yesterday when I uh, when I was listening to some video about the um, in Great Britain, Trump is visiting, and there are thousands of people so excited chanting, "We want Trump! We want Trump!" And then of course, and we love like, Trump. Yeah, we love Trump. And then there's like a hundred people gathered together to protest, and their energy was so 
so vile i couldn't believe it i couldn't even watch yeah. it so on moment. the mainstream over here they would just show the hundred or so protesters who don't like it while ignoring the hundreds of thousands lined in the street with a great big tv screen right. and a stage singing a song we love trump right and so i i had kind of an expansion moment when when i saw that flag that had um the united states flag and then it was a great britain flag and then QAnon was in one of the corners and it just really hit me. It's like my bag expanded or popped in some way because I was like, oh, my God, this is worldwide. And it's not just because of, quote, unquote, the Q phenomena and some people are paying attention. It's light workers and they've mm -hmm. received the download and they're on board. And a, an aspect of our soul is all coming together as a collective to flip the planet. And it was just so clear to me. And so then Stuart and I went out to dinner and my frustration level with his little 3D goldfish bag, I got more angry and frustrated than I ever have. And and I just blurted something out and <clears throat> about that whole, you know, celebration going on over there. I was like, oh, the, the Brits are so excited. Trump is there. They just love him. And he's like, yeah, he's going to rule the world. And I was like, no, he doesn't want to rule the world. He's he's a very good person. And, and he just said, I can't talk about this. I can't talk about this. And just the day before, I actually got him to look up the pay sewers, which got him into the Federal Reserve. And he did his own research and he found a website that, I mean, the guy that was talking, he read it all out loud. It was so resonant to Stuart's philosophy. You do realize our YouTube, our YouTube video, I'll never see the light of day, they'll ban it. I don't monetize <laughs> anything anyway, so I don't care. I'll put yeah, it on my right. Patreon. I'll just keep uploading it. <laughs> everywhere right. the right people will find it um oh, yeah. but yeah i got so frustrated and i just wanted to, to share the observation that um you just have to breathe through it and let go of it and you know everything you said was just directly for me that they're on their own timeline and they've got to they've just got to find their way and we can't let that slow us down in terms of i can't let that slow me down in terms of where i'm headed and what i know and there will be moments where there's more friction and more disparity between your fields and moments when your fields kind of slosh together and we just witnessed that within the course of one day and and something else that i've been working with what was this it just flipped out of my head course it does that when you get on a roll <laughs> probably means i'm supposed to shut up <laughs> uh yeah it's gone i don't know but it's 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 been a it's been a journey for me to to let go of my attachment to him oh the thing i was gonna say is i've been noticing ever since november of 2017 when q started posting that um during all that time i've been listening to videos and sometimes I would walk through the room where he was sitting and I would not pause the video. I'd be like, I'll just try it this time and see if he can get any, you know, little, little gems that drop through. And inevitably, every single time, the person that was talking would say something that Stuart could write off. I mean, every once in a while they say things like once Jordan Sather said, they don't teach any truth in colleges. <laughs> It's like, I know where you're coming from, Jordan, but that's just not true. <laughs> and so, of course, that's the part that Stuart hears. And that has happened ever since November of 2017. And when he found that article yesterday, I was like, okay, this resonates with him. And this guy is, he's like, he's saying, oh, conspiracy theories and all this blah, blah, blah is just silliness. But if you do your research, you discover that, you know, that, there's, there are a whole bunch of people that own the Federal Reserve, and they won't disclose who they are, and um, but they say it's for this reason, and, you know, and that was the one thing that Stuart walked away with was, wow, they don't tell you, so there are just thousands of shareholders in the Federal Reserve, but he said they, the ones that they're not disclosing those names, he doesn't, they don't tell you how much, what percentage of, you know, the shareholding that they was have. Was it quadrillion? <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, big okay, fat Q. that's one <laughs> tiny little expansion that he had, and then I just see him yeah. kind of shrink down right after that. Yeah, I, see, I find as well me. with them, with people like that, they're so they're so invested in their belief structure, yeah, that to back down from it, even though they know it's wrong, is is like. Um, 
a defeat. Yeah. You know, they, 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 they have to admit they were wrong. And right. so it's just like with me, you've got to give them the space to make, I, I always give them the space to make your own mind up. I'm not telling you what, that it's right or that it's wrong. It's both. Whatever you believe is, is, is right. But give them the space. So eventually they'll come in and go, you know what you're saying? I think you're right. But you can't go and tell, turn around and go, I told you so. I told you. You know, you've just got to let them come come back. And that's what our job is as light workers is to put our truth out. Whoever finds it and resonates finds it. And, you know, family members are the worst people in the world to help oh. wake up. They're the last ones to wake up because they're so resistant to changing their beliefs and come come on because come on the crazy train with the rest of us do you know what i mean it's like she's right. on a crazy train i don't want to join it and eventually they realize they're the only ones not on the crazy train yeah. exactly and they don't want to be left behind and you know they're trying to scramble to jump on it and so well, something symbolic did you all see where the lady went and punctured the trump blimp that yeah. they were going to try to float took a pen popped it I haven't busted watched any bubble. news this week. <laughs> busted the bubble, busted the balloon. Was it a derogatory blimp? It was one of the ugly little. Oh, yeah, it's symbolic of busting the bubble, popping the belief structure. She walked up, said it was something about her birthday, and she said, "I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it." That's so There's right been a lot country. going on yeah. in dream time, which I'm not authorized to say about, talk about, but yeah. Is a lot going on, a lot of reshuffling, let's say. Oh, that's encouraging. A lot of reshuffling going on. I, can I mean, the it. energy over here is just amazing. Yeah. You can feel that. You can feel that in people's videos when they shared about all the, the Trump supporters over there, they were getting knocked off YouTube. I mean, it's so obvious. Because mm -hmm. people say, I think people think that, you know, the girls are all woo woo and all spiritual and crystals and love and light. It's like we are kick ass bastards and we've, we're probably the hardened Q followers. It's not just spiritual and crystals and grid work and opening your heart and chakras and meditation. We've got a job to do and it involves going into these dark areas, yep. you know, because they don't suspect, you know us going into these areas and doing our stuff but you know the bruise hold the space and we go in and do our work but it's on spiritual realms or in 3d realms you know it has to involve all that's going on and all the unsealed indictments about to happen and i know there's a lot about to happen thousand. yeah there's they're over going, they're going to, and... well i can imagine a hundred thousand people being arrested for abusing people and children and all the horrible and horrible things that have gone on but we've got to not judge and just hold loving compassionate space but while at the same time not letting them get away with it because they'll never learn their soul lesson otherwise right we also have to remember in order to make it a little bit easier for some that have trouble with forgiveness is the fact that they may have themselves been abused. And it's a plenty of oh, yeah. It's so, centuries and centuries of yeah. abuse that's just going in circular through families, through generations. And it's, you know, the light workers have come here into families of abuse. And, you know, we've mm -hmm. broken the chain. It's like Game of Thrones, the breaker of chains. That's mm -hmm. what light work, we're breaking our family DNA chain of that abuse and we're stopping it. They've not, they're in it. They're in the darkest depths of of that and then able to come out and break their chains they're still mm -hmm. chained and there are beliefs when you are stuck in those chains that make it easier to be there and that's part of the that's the programming of the 3d and it's how it's how people maintain their sanity and so that... people can't have beliefs ripped away from them or they would lose their sanity there's a kind of um balance that people have and yeah, so you can't you can't force them well, that's out the same of their base they lose it. Yeah. So, so I've pulled three cards to do a quick reading on the on them because because there are shadow sides. We've allowed the shadow side to grow, so we could learn as well. So the card I pulled for though that aspect of ourselves in three D is the shadow. So the shadow outshines sphere, and as you can see, it's a heart with a black hole in the middle of it, but it's still shining. 
It's got a void in the middle. It's almost a person in there working in the heart. It's like that's that's the reality. You know, there's a shadow in it. We've got to work on that shadow. And how we do that is to ascend. That's the next card I got, you know. Move away from all that holds you back. And there's a big black hole there. People are scared of going into that big black hole because they think it's quantum physics says it sucks you in. It creates life. You've got to go in to be created, <laughs> recreated. Mm. And what's going to, what's the, what's going on with all this? I've got the sparkling diamond heart, which is about secrets, the unveiling, authenticity is vital expression of your truth. You know, you've got to be authentic and speak from your heart and be willing to go into that heart and that depth and that darkness within your own heart and love it and work with it not judge it and when you can every single person on the planet can work on that they they have to ascend they have to sparkle because we've worked and we can't see that darkness because we've not got it with us anymore but how do you learn your lesson unless you take that lesson and absorb it and work with it somebody sent me a message the other day about what is evil it's the opposite of lived literally the word says it (laughs) you know evil live it's wow. the same word backwards. It's wow. the opposite of it's the opposite of living. You know, so if you're not respecting your heart and your own worth and your own shadow and darkness within yourself, then you're not living. You know, you're working with that evil. You're working with the opposite of that. But yeah, you have to work just, with it. It's like rubbing the fur the wrong way doesn't mean that the fur isn't there and that the fur has its own direction naturally and it's like evil is just the denial of life and goodness but the life and goodness doesn't stop i mean even if somebody is involved in criminal enterprise for decades it doesn't change the fact that they have a heart that they are a compassionate being that there's there's a life in there and it can be brought it could the fur can be rubbed the right direction at any moment it can be changed so it's just creator having a having a go at um let's see what happens if we forget who we are Mm. i mean i'm just seeing on the planetary scale as well it's just like if you can imagine this planet and she's dropped down from a higher dimension and she's had to as she goes down it's you know the pressure on her is crushing her all into a dark little ball and then eventually she's she's unwinding and she's spreading herself out and expanding like we are we're expanding well she's got to work with that within her and she's putting it pushing it out and as light workers we're channeling that and working through it and it's it's after layer after layer but we're also being replaced with the you know the, the light coming in to replace that and blowing the frequency up you know, the planet has got to work with that itself. We're all on the planet. Mm, yeah, we're all working together. We're connected. So what, what? what's unusual? We're talking about the people that are in the dark, that they're, they're in a program where they can't see any different than what they're doing, and that it would be a denial of their belief system right if they were to well i think they they do see the difference they're adults they've got to see it's right and they know right from wrong they're just in a position where they feel like it's their life if they cut if they do something about it it's a yep. life or death i think for most of them it's like if they're going to go against the family lines so, you know that's the may as well just mm-hmm. that's the death warrant signed exactly so they're in a catch-22 position, but what what they're working with, they're scared of where they're going to go because they know that the place that they used to go to is not there anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not accessible. 4, 4D shut off for them. Wow. So they, they, they can't go and escape and wait a couple of hundred years and come back in the same bloodline. It's not there. They're scared of where they're going to go. They're scared of the judgment if they do. So, you know, there's got to be compassion. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's only one of us down here, <laughs> and I'm sick of fighting myself. Right. This is so funny. I'm feeling a question coming in, like okay. we're doing a live. Um, <laughs> we should do a live me. sometime. That'd totally. be brilliant. 
Yeah, I hear somebody asking how they can manage their energies better to ride out the um, the waves, and they want us to talk about grounding techniques. Right, well, we can all say how we do it. I don't know who wants to go first. I think we all do it the same way, don't we? <laughs> and you can explain it beautifully. I mean, myself, the other addition to mine is I keep a rock in my bra. And, and I you have a grounding mat. I have a grounding mat that I'm sitting on as we speak. But to me, the rock, when I first started realizing I needed to ground, I took a big old rock and stuck it in my bra. If you're a guy, put it in your pocket. If you don't wear a bra, put it in your pocket. But when you take that stone, and I, to me, that is earth. That's part of the earth. And I guess you make that intention that this little booger is going to ground me. And I put one in my bra every day, especially if I have to go out in public. I used to have to do that every time I'd go in public. I've lost them. I've lost the rocks. They fall out in front of people. Oops. But the bottom line is <laughs> you can do something that simple to get started. And if you realize and know that that stone, that big rock is there for your protection. I've had friends that have called me in panic and I'm telling them you need to go outside and ground while I'm at work. I said, step outside, pick you up a rock, put it in your pocket, and they will call me later and said, oh, my God, it made a huge, huge difference. Wow. So a rock, the grounding mat, the Annette taught me a beautiful method for grounding, and uh, it's been incredible ever since. Yeah, that's on my, on my YouTube. Yes. In there the, somewhere. So how do you do it, Paula? How do you, when you're feeling the anxiety or the overwhelmness of the energies coming in? Wow. You know, I don't do anything really consciously. In fact, I think it would be very good to pass around the question, what do we mean when we say grounding? Because I think I just, I'm just a very instinctive creature. And I think that I choose, I choose the right foods that I need to, when I need to ground, sometimes I need to eat meat um, to just, and by grounding what I would, how I would interpret that is to just kind of stabilize my energy field and feel like I'm all here. And I feel like I've done so much work in the past to get all of me here that, um, it's really pretty simple. And I check in with my inner child through Gladys and some, I just gaze into her eyes and I say, how are you doing? And she's, I project my inner child into her eyes and then I can see how I'm feeling and getting in touch with myself my emotional body and uh, surrounding myself with compassion, you know, that's what I do. But also I think when I'm creative and I make stuff, I work with my hands and make the fairy chairs yes. or if I'm digging in the dirt and I'm just like really connected to the earth or walking barefoot on it, or I think taking an Epsom salt bath, I know that that's mm -hmm. more for clearing, but um, it just like the hot water just helps me sort of collect into myself as well as, relax and just kind of let go of whatever I've been holding on to or resisting. It's like, just be here. So what do you guys mean by grounding? With me, I, my energy is quite high and it's like when I can feel my energy going so high where I'm almost out of my body and it's, I'm getting so many downloads and I'm, you know, it's like your heart's racing and you vibrate and you buzz in. And, you know, I, I I have to, like you say, I'll go outside in bare feet. I'll stand on the ground and I'll just release the energy. It's like a build up of energy. You know, you're getting all these just energy coming into you. And I'm upstairs, so it's not going into the floor, into the earth. It's like a overload of energy. It's like plugging all your devices into one socket. And it's it's I feel like it's too much energy. So I've got to go and ground like you would in anything you know let release that energy and if that doesn't help then I will have a bit of meat you know that helps lower my my frequency so it lowers my energy intake for the day mm -hmm. if I'm feeling like I'm getting too many downloads I will do stuff to lower my frequency or most people are trying to raise their frequency most light workers are trying to do the opposite of I vape I have CBD and um nicotine in it i don't smoke anymore but even that when i was smoking would lower my frequency enough to be able to be back in my body and settle and you know be at a lower frequency because to work in 3d you've got to at some point you've got to you can't constantly be in a high vibe because everything else has been pushing against you so it's like you're almost 
pushing against it but it, it seems to be the other way now it's going like I'm always high and I've just got to be able to relate to anybody else I've got to lower my frequency my own internal frequency by doing things that other people wouldn't do like eating meat eating I live off chocolate and sweets and crap I don't drink water because I don't like the taste of it even filtered so I drink my my Vimto and I'll have a coffee that helps ground me you know that's, that's what I do the coffee thing I thought that was amazing coffee grounds tea coffee leaves. grounds and tea leaves yes that's it does exactly what nature wants it to do so I did I got my husband on the tea we drink green tea in the morning instead of coffee one thing that I've got to say as well I've, I've, I've got a real I know it's, it's, it sounds really bizarre <laughs> I don't know what else it sounds bizarre but my team have validated this for me I don't shower anymore I've been using the flannel and filtered water to, to wash because you, your skin is the biggest organ in your body and it's like you could be putting all this good water and all this good food inside you for those who are trying to raise their frequency and then you go and have a bath and <laughs> your skin's the biggest dog and you've got this absorbing everything because you use the shower water's not filtered. Then you're putting it all back in and the biggest absorber of frequency you can via water in your body, on your skin. And it's just like for the last couple of weeks I've not been able, I just feel like, oh my God, it's like having an acid bath or <laughs> an acid shower at the oh, minute. No. I just don't want to do it. I'm going to so. try that. Just heat up a pot of filtered water and... Do a little sponge bath. Yeah, because so, I, I do um, nice Himalayan salt and all stuff like that and all nice things in it. But, yeah, and I've, I use nice stuff on my face. But it's just like even my hair, it's just like, honestly, it, it feels like pulling teeth wanting to wash my hair at the minute. I don't want to wash my hair. I just really don't. My hair's screaming, don't wash me, don't put that on me. So, it's just like, okay, not. so there's, there's another question coming in, and it's kind of the reverse. Um, somebody is asking, how can I connect with my higher selves? With, you know, how can okay. I get these downloads? Easiest way to do this. Okay, everyone, close your eyes. Put your left hand over your heart. Feel your heart beating. There you go. You've connected to your higher self. <laughs> it's not that complicated. And then all you've got to learn to do is to speak from there instead of here. Yeah, and you can actually hear the difference in the tone of voice that you use. Like, just imagine that your energy is coming from there. Yeah, and as, as a psychic intuitive, which I've been doing for years and years, um, people would ask me, you know, how can I develop my intuition and, you know, hear my guides as well as you do and stuff. And I just said, it's been a long, long decades journey of learning, learning to discern the voices in my own head, which are different aspects of me. And if you listen to Phil Good's video, then you become aware of the fact that you've got all these parallel selves. You're just trying to manage yourself. So after years and years of trying to manage that and be, become familiar with all these like which part of me is speaking right now you're practicing discernment so that when a vibration comes in that is say Jesus is talking to you you can feel you can begin to recognize the energy signature of different energies and higher self tuning in tuning into your higher self I think it's a little bit more difficult to acknowledge and recognize the voice of your higher self because it's you and you think it's you because it is you it is you and and the just ask yourself what's the vibration of this is this a vibration that would disallow anything unlike love you know it's a negative way of saying is this a loving compassionate voice and you know when you're in a really high place and you're you're feeling inspired and you get these ideas well you're connecting with a higher aspect of yourself and you have lots of different aspects but um, you know, different situations will call different aspects down into your vessel. Like if you're experiencing um, a dark entity and you go into protective mode, you can feel, I can feel that energy of my warrior coming through. And sometimes <laughs> if I feel the dark energy and then my little 3D self gets scared, I just call in the warrior and instantly I see this aspect of myself just standing, facing, looking, acknowledging, doing whatever it needs to do to to deal with I, I love I used to love that it didn't it's not happened for a long time if I ever felt being pushed on like that it's just like saying to Phil the other day we were chatting and I said it's just like getting a fishing hook you know it's like people fish for minnows I'm fishing for sharks but if I but if they come looking for me 
I'll be bait. I'm quite happy being bait. I love being bait. And it's just like, you know, the shark thinks it's caught a minnow, but it doesn't realise I'm like one of those deep sea fish with that little antenna with the great big mouth behind it that they can't see in the depths. And it's like, come on in, come on in. You're hooked now and you're not getting, you, you're in my field. I'm not letting you go. I'm bringing you in to deal with, deal with this. What is this? And I will deal with that and I will keep it in my field until I've, until it's it's gone right down until the smallest aspect of it itself, and then I'll release it. You know, because it's they're usually big, scary monsters, and but you've got to be a big and scarier monster. You know, okay, and deal with we're it. Gonna, we're gonna end this video because it'll be easier to upload. But let's just start in right away again with this subject. Because yeah, and we'll do this, this maybe next one is part two, and yeah, leave it for a couple of days till we upload that. So yeah, yeah. sub to us all. All right, you all. Okay. Love Peace. you all. Peace out. Bye.